So like I said, today we are comparing the North American Rescue's emergency trauma dressing and the Olay's modular bandage. Um, now, surprise, surprise, I do have an opinion regarding these, but these are both uh, great bandages with slightly different uses, um, although ultimately they're both used to control bleeding. Um, so as far as packaging and what these come in, these are both the six inch, inch versions of um, both companies' products. Um, both come in a four inch version and then both have a flat pack version if the um, cylinder uh, form factor doesn't really fit in your IFAC or wherever you're keeping this. Um, these bandages are gonna be primarily used to either wrap a junctional site where you have um, packed the wound and then this wraps it and secures it in place and provides pressure, uh, or it's gonna be used on a wound that either can't have an applica uh, tourniquet applied and can't have wound packing such as the head, um, or minor bleeding on the arm or leg that you still have to stop, um, but that doesn't really warrant tourniquet application. Um, so as you can see, both are, are pretty similar. They both have directions for use on the back. Um, and then pricing is almost identical. Uh, the Olay's is uh, about $7.95 and the ETD is $7.99. And granted, on um, North American Rescue's website, if you are a uh, professional in this realm, either law enforcement, military, or EMS or fire, you can get a discount, so this will probably come in a little bit less. Um, but very, very comparable in prices. So let's open these up uh, and we'll take a look at how these are applied and the different features both have. Um, so right away, if you're opening the North American Rescue, they've got the red tab and they call it a red tip technology, but um, really it just shows you exactly where to tear to open it. And both are vacuum sealed. So it comes out looking like this. Throw the packaging aside. And this one has a big black arrow pointing to the uh, pull up top, and then you have two um, on the sides, two small arrows. So your always comes out in a protective uh, paper packaging, which is actually kind of annoying. Um, but once they're open, they both um, look pretty similar. Now, one of the great things about both of these bandages is um, it's not gonna, if you just grab the tip, it's not just gonna unroll. They've got Velcro stops along the way, um, so it's not gonna unravel and hit the floor. Um, that's a pain in the butt. Uh, same with the OAs, it doesn't come down. So we'll start with the emergency trauma dressing. Um, this is very simplified. Essentially all this is is an elastic wrap and a pressure pad there. So you're going to wrap this around somebody's arm um, or leg or head, whatever it is, providing pressure and then wrapping tight. And then when you get to the end, you have a clip. Um, that will go and uh, clip to the end of it, but it, it keeps it pretty simple. Uh, no real hidden features in this. And you'll see with the um, Olay's that the Olay's has a little bit more uh, features packed into it. So the Olay's bandage, as you unroll it, you'll see this uh, plastic cup here. Um, and what this is for, this is to provide direct pressure over the site of bleeding. The thought is, is as you come around with the elastic wrap, that's gonna compress that and provide more uh, pinpoint pressure. I, I really don't know how well it works. Um, I haven't read any studies on it. Maybe it's the best thing ever, uh, maybe not. So uh, this is one feature it boasts. Um, and then as you come around to the gauze pad on the side, you'll notice an inlet here and this actually has um, sterile gauze um, inside of it. And this can be used for wound packing, um, it can be used for an additional wrap, uh, whatever, or just more of an absorbent pad um, in this section. So kind of a nice thing to have, um, nice thing to know you have. And then you also have an uh, occlusive sheet that you can use and then wrap the OAs 
around um, somebody's chest if they have a sucking chest wound. Um, so two features, nice to have in there. It's, it kind of makes it a, more of a multi-purpose bandage um, than just the um, ETD. Um, but the basic application of it is very much the same. It's got the Velcro stops as you come down um, and, oops, and will unroll all the way. And then when you get to the end, there's the exact same clip um, to secure the bandage. In my opinion, um, and like I said before, this is just my opinion, you know, I, I'm not too strong sided on one or the other on these two bandages, but the Olay's bandage is a nice thing if maybe you're trying to save space in your kit, um, whatever it might be, um, you know, to have a little bit more functionality out of it. If you can only carry like one bandage, this is cool because it carries an occlusive with it, um, which can be used in a pinch. I still wouldn't want to use that necessarily for a sucking chest wound if I didn't have to. I'd rather use an actual chest seal that's going to uh, adhere better. Um, so the Oase is nice and it has a lot of nice features, but as far as ease of use, I really like the North American Rescues product because there's nothing you have to figure out. Um, you know, you don't have to be digging in the pocket to find these things. Um, and I just find it's easier to know, like, this is my wrap and then I have a separate thing of gauze for wound packing and I have a separate um, chest seal and all of that in my kit. So I do prefer just the simplicity of the North American Rescues product, um, but I can appreciate that this has uh, a lot more features and could appeal to a lot of people, especially if you're trying to save space, if you don't have a lot of real estate on your vest or in your kit, whatever it might be. So both are great choices. I'd say they're pretty comparable to each other. Um, it's important when you buy these products that you open them up and train with them so you know what you're getting into and you, if you're carrying an Olay's you don't open it up the first time when you really need to use it and don't know how to apply it. So very important that you open these products, you know, they're not too expensive so if you buy one, if you need one, buy two and open the second one up and train with it and use it a lot. Uh, so that's my advice to you. What's up YouTube, Doc86, it's, uh, it's been a while. So today what we're doing is we're reviewing three very, uh, very well-known uh, bandages that are uh, pertaining to, I guess you could say the whole tactical TCCC environment. Um, we have the, the Israeli dressing, the Mercy Trauma dressing from North American Rescue, the h and H H bandage. I know it's a lot of H's, We'll move past that here. So today what we're going to do is we're going to objectively review all three bandages. I'm going to go over some pros and cons. These are, once again, this is my opinion. This is how I feel about it. If uh, if you don't like it, comment and we'll uh, we'll discuss back and forth and we'll, we'll go over this, you know, appropriately. So without any further obstruction, we're going to start off with the North American Rescue Dressing. Now... All dressings come vacuum sealed, big plus, so you don't have to crumple and do what I'm doing right now to demonstrate for you. Four notches, rip. In my case, I already cut it so I can get to the bandage for the demonstration purposes. So, moving, uh, starting with the wrapper. Easy. Instructions already on there. Because there's, there's some really simple people out there that don't know how to use a bandage. I'm not one of those people. I'm just explaining you, you the stuff. Now, bandage. This bandage is really user-friendly. This bandage is so user-friendly, in fact, that if you didn't have the instructions on it, you could probably still figure it out. Pad. Little velcro breaks to stop the bandage from unrolling now you have i want to say four by right around six inches of space to cover a wound which is pretty decent pretty decent so we got four by six ace bandage the little plastic hook claspy thingies that i'm not really a big fan of because sometimes they can break especially when you got someone who's completely overstressed and trying to do good ditch medicine, you know, good battlefield first aid or just non, 
non-safe trauma care. We're going to go with that. that that's, that's the word we're going to use today. They come in four and six inch. They're all across the board in the U.S. military. They have an NSN number. They are issued in basic, you know, your basic IFACs. You know. So every every Joe Schmo that has an IFAC on his kit has one of these. Good to go. Now, next item on the list is the Israeli bandage. I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm not a fan of the Israeli bandage. Just disclaimer. When they came out, they were awesome. They were all that was out there at the time. So it was really important that we transition at, at that time period to a better, more modern pressure dressing. And it's called the Israeli dressing because, well, it was, it was, it was designed by the Israelis. These guys, these guys have lived... You know, Israel is Israel is very resilient because they've lived in a state of war since the time of the Bible. They've got to figure out how to do healthcare. So it comes in two wrappers. Once again, instructions. A little secondary wrapper that's really easy to rip. Now the cool thing is is if you're a medic and you choose to use these, why, I do not know, but you could take them all out of their wrapper and leave them in this wrapper so you could see what you got. And then when you need it, just grab it, rip it, and you're good to go. It saves time of having to get through two wrappers, which I guess that's the only plus of pre-staging them like that. <sighs> oh. The immediate con is this clamp. It gets, you know, heat just crystallizes that glue and peels right off. Useless. So then you're stuck with pretty much a lower grade version of the emergency trauma dressing. There you go. That's my opinion. It's got the same little plastic hooky whatever clamp at the end. A little clasp that you dig through the uh, ace bandage with and you hope you don't rip through it you know in your in your haste to get the bandage secured just tie it off and last but not least the H bandage H bandage comes in 8 by 10 has a high density polymer H that instead of being glued on it's secured by I want to say an almost Kevlar like really thick nylon fabric it's really it's sewn on really see if I could get it really close to the camera you've got all this sewn here and it's sewn all the way through so when you put this down on a wound, you know, you can really get some focus downward pressure simply by pulling the ace bandage around, pulling through, and coming back. Man, yeah, I'm biased. I like this bandage. I really do. It's what I, it's what I carry. It's what I put in everyone that works with me is IFAC because if something happens, I don't have to go digging through my stuff first. I can just dig through yours. And quite frankly, it works. In my opinion, it works. And it, I mean, it's there, there's also some solid, you know, actual background study behind this. And I took the time to read it all. I just forgot where I put it. Wrapper. Once again, directions. Let's see you've got multiple uses with this thing i mean it's easy to use just like the emergency trauma dressing but you've got multiple uses besides just gunshot trauma you have you you have avulsions um small eviscerations um uh burns 
you know, if you don't have burn gel dressings, you can pour cold water on this and it's a big pad, so it's gonna cover the surface area. It's just all in all, it's, in my opinion, bang for your buck. Really, really readily available. It does have an NSN number. It's actually smack right there when you look at it. And there are some units in the military that still use this. I can tell you for a fact that the Master at Arms at Kings Bay Naval Weapons Station's uh, sub base had these in their kits. That's not an OPSEC thing. It's it's a first aid dressing. So I'm not, I'm not violating anybody's policy with that. So, um, I don't I don't see a problem in using them. They work. I uh, I know a lot of FMF corpsmen that prefer to use these. I know some army medics that are mad that I have them in my bag and they have to carry something else. But at the end of the day, I'm not in the army anymore. I do uh, I do tactical medical stuff on the civilian side. We're not going to get into what I'm doing right now too much on on video. But needless to say, I'm a fan of the H bandage. The other two bandages that are out there are the, the cinch uh, dressing and the um, the Tactical Medical Solutions Elias Modular Bandage. I've used both of them. I've actually used all of these dressings that I'm talking about right now. And at the end of the day, I prefer the H dressing. If you, if you want to ask me specifically why, other than what I've talked about in this video, I'll, I'll be glad to discuss that with you. Leave a leave a good comment well not a good comment leave a comment say whatever the hell you want you know I'll, I'll address it you know if it's uh, if it's inappropriate I'll address it if it's appropriate I'll address it all in all have a wonderful day um, wherever you're at God bless well whoever you worship you know bless that you know in your direction have a nice day bye